I want to kind of switch gears a little bit uh, because we have a we had a, a, a question come up in uh, in our quick answers and and Carrie while I'm bringing that up what is quick answers can you tell the fine folks that are watching us what, <laughs> quick what a answer. quick answer is is where you have the ability to chat and get a quick answer on something that's pressing so you can get back to what you're doing. Yeah. So we have, uh, we have the ability for, for our members at schoolbookkeeping.com to, to reach out uh, through, through our website and ask a, ask a question. And uh, if it's not addressed in a course, we can, we can speak to that right then and there and get them back and back and back up and running. So the question was, uh, do you have a video on restaurant accounting? <laughs> right, I'm struggling with and uh, on how to take sales reports from a point of sale system that does not integrate and journal entry them so that inventory, COGS, sales, and expenses are correct. Right, so we don't have a video on that, so we're going to create one right now. <laughs> right on, on, the fly. on how to on the fly and how to do that. Um, well, so the, fir the first thing you're going to need is their Z out report. What is a Z out report? Well, you know, that's a good <laughs> question. <laughs> it's kind of like I'm, we're throwing out these payroll terms. So Z out yeah. report is something that all point of sale um, systems, even. Uh, yeah, this goes back to, goes actually back to cash register days, right? Cash right. register days. They give you a Z out report. So at the end of the day, the cash register person, which by the way, I wanted to be one when I grew up because I thought they got to keep all the cash. Then I found out they didn't. And I was like, oh, no fun. But anyway, so you came, I was you came home about, and told your parents, I don't get to keep the cash in the cashier. I wanted <laughs> that like, order. I and wanted also on your I, check, you have taxes taken out. I know that was bad. But the real sad thing was when I was little, that drawer that popped out for you to give change. I thought the cashier got to take it home. But anyway, she doesn't <laughs> or she wouldn't last long. But anyway, so at the end of the day, everything balances out and it's summarized on a Z tape, but they can do the same thing in any software system. So they're totaling the numbers that you tell it to total. So it's all in the setup, like everything else. And what you want to do is to study that Z out report and create a template in QuickBooks, online or desktop, doesn't matter, so that you can key in those new numbers. We used to have to yeah. do that. So a Z, the Z actually stands for what? Oh, you, you're going to answer that because I have no idea. <laughs> zero. Right. zero. Oh. You're, zero, you're zeroing zero. Right. Because See, the I get so stuck in ca acronyms. I forget that there's a reason they have that. Okay. All right. So your cash register, all it does is, is add up sales you know, over the, over the course of the day. And at the end of the day, you want to start over and you zero that out so that the next day you're, you're starting at zero. And then that day's sales is going to increase. And right. then the next time that you zero out, you get your report. So that's the, that's the idea of what a Z out. There's also an X out, but that's a shift report. So yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> but you just yeah. zero out at the end of the day. So, <clears throat> so you want to mimic that in your QuickBooks, right? So They'll be um, in, they'll be out. So I'm just in a sample company here. So the way you want to handle this is, is you want to mirror what your zero, uh, your Z, Z out report is, looks like. And this could be, you know, if you're using like uh, Clover or, you know, Square point of sale or Shopify point of sale or QuickBooks point of sale. I mean, they all, they all have uh, some kind of report that will show at the end of the day, here's, uh, here's my sales. And here's the payment methods that I took throughout, throughout the course of the day. Uh, yes. so that's what you're, that's what you're going to be uh, mimicking by creating it. So you would create uh, some products and services to be as detailed or not as you like. Right. So you can and just, um, if it's a restaurant, so I'll use the example of the, of the question, if it's a restaurant, you may want to know food sales versus beverage sales beverage. versus um, alcohol sales, right? Yeah. And, and some of these things may actually have uh, certain sales taxes tied to them. So it really just uh, depends on that type of how much information you want to, uh, you want to have versus, um, 
what do you want QuickBooks to know about, right? Like point of sale, you know, QuickBooks point of sale, you have the ability to just send over summary sales and it's taxable sales or non-taxable sales. That's, that's really all it's, it's concerned about. And then it will, it will do that for you in, in desktop, right? It will create the, the, the daily sales summary uh, for you. Um, but the, the other caveat to all of this is, the, is how people paid for goods and services in that environment, right? Because you have, um, you have uh, you know, cash, okay. check, credit yeah. card, uh, gift credit cards, card. you know, those types of things. So you want to you also put in on your, uh, on your items the, the, the payment methods uh, as well. Because I had a, I had a, a client who was a mail um, like a UPS store, but it wasn't a UPS store. It was, it was that mail stop, you know, type of stuff. And they had a, they had a proprietary uh, point of sale system that did not integrate with, with QuickBooks. But what he was doing when I met him was he was entering these things in his journal entries. He was taking that ZL uh, tape and then putting these in as, as journal entries. And then it was a mess, right? Oh, so yeah. <laughs> so I like to do the- sales, sales receipts. That's how I like right. to do it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a daily well, sales and- summary is is a is is a great way to mirror the the Z out uh, Z out uh, ticker report, right? Uh, there- but you want to start by creating items. So you create the the level of detail in the items uh, that you that you want. You were saying something before. Yeah. I- well, what I was going to say was, uh, see how it has inventory option. Don't you don't want to do inventory because your point of sale is going to be the source of truth for your inventory. Right. What you you want to draw the line in the sand. I know a lot of times it's you're really itchy to put in both places. Don't, yeah. don't let let the let the point of sale manage your gift cards and just keep the balance over here in QuickBooks. Same thing with inventory. Let it do a journal entry, not, and you can do that by setting these things up. Right. So I'm just going to create this as a as a taxable sales item because we're going to just make it super simple. Um, we would leave you know, the sales price uh, blank. Um, and then we need an income uh, there, account. Yeah. So we'll just choose uh, sales of product income. And if we want to, we can choose, you know, the, the, the various, uh, and like you want to do that the, 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 or the do you want to, I, it, dep- it depends, right. <laughs> it depends, um, you know, what, what you're doing with sales tax inside of your QuickBooks, right? So if you're using QuickBooks to, to help you uh, calculate the sales tax that was remitted and, and make those payments, then yes, you want to you wanna let QuickBooks re, you know, do the calculations uh, right there because bear in mind, you may have a discrepancy from your point of sale system uh, versus uh, what, what you enter into QuickBooks if you have QuickBooks recalculate the sales tax, right? So, but if you want to just be explicit and say whatever's in my point of sale system uh, is what I want to enter into QuickBooks, then you would create, you know, ultimately create items for those, yeah. Uh, so that they would, uh, so that there would be no calculation uh, of uh, recalculation of sales tax. Because you could feasibly have a rounding issue, right? If you right. have at the end of the day, um, you know, fifty two hundred dollars and you know some odd number of of taxable sales. But on each sale is smaller, smaller chunks. You could have a rounding issue with uh, with cents, uh, fractions of cents that would have been rounded up or down depending on um, how it how it fell in each of those uh, sales. So it's just something to keep in mind. Well, and All also right. to, to just to get it uh, further jagged on the edge there, restaurants have a weird sales tax. Bed and breakfast yeah. have a weird sales tax. So it's not like your typical. Um, inventory that your retail inventory. So it may be better if you have weird percentages that QuickBooks would have no idea of what what those are. So just something to keep um, in mind. So I am going to create this this uh, uh, this one as a non taxable sale. This is the penalty of doing this on the fly. <laughs> we don't have this already set up. We were going to do it in desktop, but we weren't able to get into desktop. This is non-taxable. Okay, it does have food. Yeah, yeah, because you can get 
the nice part about um, you know QuickBooks Online over desktop is <laughs> is the fact that uh, the automatic sales tax has those um, various categories uh, that are associated with certain certain sales tax taxes. Uh, so that you can, uh, QuickBooks can set those up for you. So you don't have to know the sales tax compliance with all of that, but feasibly you've done that in your point of sale system. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, don't, don't do, yeah. Be very careful. I've heard when people turn it on, it's not what they think. So it's, right. it looks pretty. So then but... we're going to create a um, tender type. So we're going to create another non-inventory item. This will be cash received. Now here, we typically want to put this into undeposited funds, but I don't think this item is going to let us do that. We'll see. And close. Oh, I stand corrected. Well, actually, I sit corrected. <laughs> so it did let us do that. Uh, so we're going to do cash here. And then we're going to do duplicate it and just for brevity here, we're going to just put credit cards. Now, you, what you could do is you could have one for each type of credit card, Amex, Discover, American, uh, you know, I already said Amex, Visa, <laughs> MasterCard, um, because sometimes those get deposited separately, right? So, you know, Discover and American Express, they they fancy themselves better than the rest. And so they deposit maybe deposit on their own schedule as opposed to uh, Visa MasterCard, which are lumped together. Uh, so again, it really just depends on how much detail you need to you, you need to know uh, so that your QuickBooks reality matches your reality reality. But I'm just gonna put credit card received uh, and a credit card so I can't type and talk at the same time. Uh, as these items hard to see. Okay. And these are these are actually non-taxable, so I should have done that with cash. I've done they can close. All right. So we've got one for taxable sales, one for non-taxable sales, and the, the tender type. So in our example here, we'll just say uh, we sold um, four thousand dollars worth of taxable stuff and a thousand dollars worth of non-taxable stuff. And we received, what, what do you want the breakdown to be? 50-50, Karen? 50-50 of... is easy. <laughs> All right, so we'll make it easy. So uh, the way you would do this is on a, a, a daily sales summary, but we're gonna create that as a sales receipt, right? Um, you would create a customer probably just for, um, you know, generality, uh, like counter sales or, uh, Z out, you know, so you just create a customer that you would enter in all of these uh, daily sales summaries are on, you, you know, you just use daily sales summaries as the name of the customer, right? We would just use our uh, taxable sales. What did I say? 4,000. Sounds good. All right. Now QuickBooks is calculating the tax on top of that. So you'd see that the uh, the tax that was collected on that was three hundred and twenty dollars. Non-taxable sales, a thousand. All right. So five thousand three hundred and twenty dollars was the amount that I brought in on the uh, in income on sales, right? But I I've, I've received half of that on with cash and half of that with with credit cards. So That's what we're going to do is, is we're going to use uh, our cash tender types, right? Uh, what is half? <laughs> 2660. Okay, right. that was good. Minus. But it's a negative, right? Because this is a negative because this is tender type that, that, is, that is actually uh, being received. That is, and it's non-taxable. That's why it's recalculating the tax. <laughs> And then our uh, credit cards, and we can you know break this out you know by Visa, Mastercard, also twenty six sixty as negative. All 
And yeah, you want the very bottom to say to zero, Z, Z report. All right. So your balance due is zero, right? So you're handling all of the bookkeeping sides of things with, uh, on the, uh, through the items or products or services that you're setting up in, in your QuickBooks. And you're creating this daily sales receipt as a zero. So to, to match the Z out uh, tape out of that um, as a, as a $0 sales receipt. Um, but and then you, that's what? not all folks. What? You have to do a deposit. <laughs> right. So okay. once we save it, okay. And it's saved. So now what happened is those, those tender types of cash, and uh, and and check uh, or check or credit cards or cash, uh, they are now going into uh, the bank deposit, right? So there's our two counter sales from those two different items, our twenty six sixty and our another twenty six sixty. There you see your cards received versus your cash received. That's going to be on a different schedule uh, than you know you, when you when you choose uh, when you charge a credit card, right? The money transfer starts. That, that gets started right away, right? And that's all done automatically uh, when you batch out your, your credit cards at the, at the end of the day. You know, the money transfer will actually start at that moment. And then you want to just match those deposits inside of, inside of QuickBooks. But you're not going to follow along and do the cash on the same day or as part of the same uh, deposit. You may actually wait two to three days to actually uh, do all of your cash deposits, right? So that's what's going to happen with those daily sales receipts is they're going to come in here uh, into the undeposited funds, and then you can just group them together, all of your cash sales. So if this happens three times, right, and you've got 2660 each day, never going to happen. But I mean, as an example, um, you're going to take the seven thousand seventy eight hundred dollars or whatever that you know equates to and then take that down to the bank and make the deposit so you would just click off all of the ones that are part of that deposit and make that one big deposit so that when the bank feed comes in it'll just match to that deposit that you've already made and then you do the same thing for checks and credit cards and you know other tender types uh, as well my rule of thumb so, is Please do it daily <laughs> so that we don't have to figure out that Fridays was added to Mondays and then Tuesdays. Just do them each yeah. day and move on. And then the yeah, credit I mean, cards, this is why we like QuickBooks payments because the credit cards are much easier to match up, but there you go. That those are your credit cards that you have to follow and see when they do deposit them. Right. So by using a daily sales summary, uh, you can mimic what's happening in the point of sale system inside of your QuickBooks. And then by, because you're using these items that you've set up ahead of time, uh, the, the, the um, accounting is being done for you. Uh, so your sales are being tracked by the sales items and your, your deposits are then being tracked by the payment items or the tender types. And then you can get more you know, granular and new detail. You can have discounts. Uh, mapped separately so you can keep track of those types of things. Whatever you want to get out of the daily sales seat receipt, um, you, can, you can do that in, uh, in the daily sales summary. 